welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Garden and Cool Planet and see I am Tamika coming at you with another oldie but a goodie video. So you guys in this video I am going to be showing you the concoction that I use in my garden. Um, it is a homemade concoction okay. Very simple and easy. Um, to me it's better than all those pesticides and stuff like that that you put on your food. Um, with this now I'm not telling anyone to spray their fruits and stuff with it. You want to start doing this. If you know you have a lot of pests in your area, you want to start doing this before you start getting your fruit and, and harvest and stuff in. So, I'm about to start this actually today. Let me go ahead and say, with any pesticides, even the one that we're about to make, do not put that on your plants when the sun is out. A lot of people say do it early morning. I like to do it in the evening for this video purposes. I am going to go out there and test it out on one plant. It is not the time to do it right now. It is about hmm, going on 3 o'clock. When I say evening is when the sun is down because that stuff will burn. Any oils and stuff like that, any pesticide, it will burn and kill your plants, okay? So let me just go ahead and say that for, you know, the new gardeners and stuff. Do not spray your plants and stuff for bugs in the day. Some people say do it early morning. I don't even do it early morning. I do it late in the evening. That way it gives it overnight time to for the leaves and stuff to dry out, okay? So, this is just what I do. You know, if you don't want to do it, you know, do what's comfortable and for you. But I just wanted to show you guys what I use. So, uh, let me see if there's anything else. So, oh, let me go ahead and say, anytime you use the pesticides and stuff for the first time, or if you're using homemade stuff, even though everything is going to be with essential oils and mild stuff, you still want to do a test on your plant. Don't go and spray the whole plant down the first time and then it may have a reaction or something or whatever the case may be and then you lose your plant. Test out one or two leaves, see how it do and then go from there. Alright, so with that y'all, let's go ahead and get into this video. Okay y'all, so... I have my little sprayer right here. Now I got this sprayer from Dollar General for five dollars. So this is the way it looked. It was five dollars. I got a couple of them actually. This is a 34 ounce thingy. So I go by I and I came to a conclusion since I was doing this so I can help you guys out to try to do measurements because you know your girl don't do no measurements and all that stuff. So with that being said. I have my Nemo. Now, this is not the Nemo I prefer. This is the Nemo I got because I can't find the neem oil on Amazon that I need. You want the neem oil that has at um that has um active as a in it. This is something that I bought last year. I don't really care for this, okay? I don't really care for this. All right. But this is what I have. But if you can 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 find the neem oil. I'm going to search again. When I search, um, they were sold out. You can find the Pure Cold Press Neem Oil. Pure Cold Press Neem Oil with active azariah in it. Okay, I'm probably saying that wrong, but you, you get the point. If you can find that, that is what you need. Cold Press Neem Oil with active azariah in it. Okay? I'm using this because I want to get started until I can I can get me some of that neem oil, okay? This is just some of the concentrated stuff that comes from Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. Like I say, it has a lot of stuff. So if you don't want to use this, just don't 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 put this in. I am going to put this in. Um, I'm thinking about it. Do I want to put this in? Because I really don't really like this stuff, y'all. To me, it don't work. I guess what? We ain't putting it in. I just made that decision. I want to keep my stuff with knowing what's in it, okay? <laughs> I wasn't going to put that in there anyway, y'all. But, um, so, just messing with you. So, what I'm going to do, since I don't have that neem oil, I did have some organic neem oil. I don't have no more. It came from the vitamin shop, and it was not the right neem oil, but it was pure neem oil, and it's better than nothing. So, I don't have any neem oil, okay? I don't have any, like I say, I'm waiting on trying to find that cold press pure neem oil, okay? So right now, since I don't have any neem oil, I am just going to be doing peppermint oil, rosemary oil, oh, and I'm forgetting my soap. Let me get my detergent. All right, you guys. So 
You can use Dawn or whatever. I had some joy left over because I had bought this last year, particularly for myself. I try to use the mildest um, kind possible. I did have some that was like the organic type of dish soap, but I'm out of it. So I'm using some dish soap. So what you want to do is you want to take your thing, and I'm just going to measure it for you. I'm going to put, this is a half tablespoon, a half tablespoon. Now, y'all, it's so many ways you can do this. You can make this with, um, like, you can put olive oil in it if you want. Let's see. Half tablespoon, okay, is what I'm doing, okay? Half tablespoon of dish soap. Gonna take my peppermint oil. I wish I had some neem oil, y'all, but I've been waiting to do this video for y'all, but I just couldn't find the neem oil, okay? So, this is peppermint oil, so I'm gonna do about... Seven drops. That was about eight drops, but it's all right. And then I'm going to do about seven drops of the rosemary oil. And like I said, if you can find that cold press, eventually I'm going to find it. Eventually I'm going to find it. And when I find it, then I will just be adding it in there. But like I say, it's all sold out. And I guess a lot of people may be using it. So, yeah. Now, like I say, you can do this so many different ways. You can take some onions and some garlic and some cinnamon. Okay? Because that may be one that I do. You can take some onions, chop it up, you know, like not small pieces. Some garlic and some cinnamon. And you can add boiling hot water to it and put something on top of it and let it steep for about an hour. Then take a strainer and pour just the juice into a container and you can use that as a, um, as a pesticide too. It's different ones that you can do. This is what I have on hand because I bought this oil last year. This is what I have on hand. So this is what I'm using. So now I'm about to take you guys outside. Even though, like I say, it's too early for me to do it. I am going to find a plant that's not directly in the sun. And I just want to show you because I know I'm, I have to go somewhere today. So I know I won't be at home this evening to do it. But I want to go ahead and show you guys, you know, in case this may help somebody out or whatever. I want to go ahead and show you guys how you do your leaves, okay? So I'm taking one for the team because you're not supposed to do it up in the day when the sun is out. Early morning, but I prefer late in the evening so they can rest and it can soak into the leaves and dry off and stuff like that over night. All right, so come on, y'all. Let's go ahead and go. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to demonstrate on this. Um, let's see, I want to do a cabbage. This is a purple cabbage, but let's, let's demonstrate. Yeah, we can demonstrate on this one right here. It's a purple cabbage right here. So I'm going to demonstrate on this. So if I lose this plant, you know, it's fine. I just want to show you guys how to do it because I have a lot of um, new gardeners. So, you know, we can learn together. So, this is one. So, just say if I don't see any eggs or anything, most of the aphids and stuff love to lay their eggs on the back of your, of your leaves, okay? So, you need to inspect your garden every day, preferably every morning. Inspect your garden, okay? You see any bugs, pull them off. You see any eggs. If you see any eggs on the back, um, they, and they have to look carefully because they will be hard. They, 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 I mean, not hard. They will be very small. So what you want to do is take the holes or whatever, rinse those eggs off, okay? Rinse those eggs off, all right? Then you're going to go and you're going to spray. You see this? You're going to spray the back of your leaves. Hold up, y'all. Wind is blowing and the stuff is going everywhere. But you're going to spray. Let me let that, that wind blow, that breeze go, because it's blowing the stuff back in my face. So you're going to spray Mm. Every time I get ready to do it, y'all, you're going to spray the back of your leaves, the front of your leaves, and all that. Ooh, the wind. I don't want it to blow. And now you see what I say in the evening time, too. That probably will help with the wind, but I want to show you guys. So I'm taking one for the team, y'all, because it's blowing it back. But you want to drench those leaves, okay? You want to drench those leaves. Mm 
All right, you see that? Drench those leaves with it. And like right now, there's a spider. I don't know if you guys can see it. He looks like he's going crazy, y'all. I didn't even see it. I don't, I don't know if you can see him, but he right, he right there. But he looks like he's going crazy. He ain't too happy about that. <laughs> um, also, what you want to do is, if you see, if you have a, a problem like that, you want to get the saw because some of the bugs come up. They start off in the saw and comes up, and you know, and start eating on your plants and stuff like that. So, also, you can go get it in the saw. Now, one thing that I like to do, I like to also get it around the base around the base in the grass or wherever your thing is all around to deter any bug so you know anything going around like that all around your thing and that should help keep them from even coming last year we put this out when the mosquitoes got really really bad we did a concoction like this and we put it out in the grass and we could walk through the grass y'all and didn't have no mosquitoes for a while. Now, after it rained, we have to reapply. So, I will say that um, if you have, if you find that you have a bug problem, make sure I only called one kid out here. Make sure that I'm um, sorry, y'all. Make sure that if you do have a bug problem, that you probably do it once or twice a week. But if you if you don't have a bug problem, you're doing it for preventative. If you're doing this for, for for preventative, then do it once or twice a week. But if you have a bug problem, you probably need to repeat these steps three to four times straight. They, like three three to four times, um, three or four days straight. Okay, I came in three or four days straight to kind of go ahead and eliminate the problem. And I had a problem with aphids. Um, I had a problem with aphids um last year and it this worked just fine it was on a tomato plant i put the tomato plant to the side so they wouldn't spread to the other ones and it worked just fine y'all so yeah this is my little concoction um of what i'll be using now let me go ahead and say do not put this on your leafy greens don't put this on your leafy greens your kale your spinach and all that don't spray this directly on your fruit okay yeah. if you have fruit and you have kale and green and spinach and all that don't mix this up this ain't for that use only soap and water and a spray bottle for your kale and your greens and stuff only soap and water a little bit of soap a little bit of dish soap and some water okay just a little bit that will help those your, your kale and stuff you don't want to eat the essential oils okay so that's why on the cabbages and stuff like that, and especially going around, you, I don't eat the cabbage leaves, okay? So if you eat the cabbage leaves or something, don't spray this on it. You just do stay with mild soap and water to get any bugs or something off. So that's how I want to say that. I use this for like the zucchini, the squash, um, stuff like that. Um, now when stuff start growing, I will take all my harvest off and then I will spray this. Stay away from your flowers too. If you got this on your blooming flowers like on your squash plants and stuff try not to spray your flowers if you get a little on it, it may be fine but try not to spray your flowers um but yeah don't put this on your on your greens your kale use just a little soap and water for that but this little concoction and like i said if you don't even want to spray if you just want to go along the base of your garden that may help too i have buckets so i'm gonna go out there when it get later and go around well it'll probably be tomorrow because I, I won't be um, at the house when it get late, so it'll probably be um, tomorrow evening. I will go around and spray this. Um, matter of fact, I can go ahead and spray where the wind is blowing. I don't want. Let me show you how I will spray it around the thing, cause I know some of you guys are visual, and I am too. So why that wind ain't blowing? Then when I say spray around it, I mean like this. So you got my buckets here. Spray around the bottom. Leading up to it. Leading up to it, okay? All the way down. All the way around. And this will help any of them little suckers that are trying to come, okay? That's what I mean right there when I say um, if you want to spray around it. So, 
yeah like i said i hope this was informational this is a good way to keep from having all that unwanted stuff that we don't know what's in it and stuff like that so yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe you guys hit that notification bell so you can be notified each and every time that i upload a video and i'll see you guys in the next one y'all until next time y'all happy gardening be safe bye